In August of 2014, after Mike Brown was shot by police officer Darren Wilson in Ferguson, Missouri, a lot of things about policing that had once been invisible to the majority of Americans suddenly jumped into view. How militarized our police had become over the last two decades was one. How some forces had been generating revenue through fines and fees in racially biased ways was another. But one of the most startling things, once people started trying to analyze and make sense of police violence, was the lack of data. No organization in the government or in the mainstream press had accurate, reliable numbers tracking how many Americans are killed by police each year. So we decided to count the cases ourselves. Some of what we found is probably not surprising. We found that lots of people die at the hands of U.S. law enforcement, about three a day. We found that black Americans are more than twice as likely to be killed by police than white Americans. And we found that, compared to other developed nations, the U.S. was an extreme outlier. But some of what we found probably is surprising. Did you know that nearly 50 Americans have died after police used less lethal taser weapons? Or that roughly 1 in 10 people killed were in the midst of a mental health crisis? Beyond the numbers, we found untold stories. Everyone knows Mike Brown's name, but few knew about William Chapman, who died under nearly identical circumstances in Portsmouth, Virginia, in April. Three months after we told his story, the officer who shot and killed him was charged with first-degree murder. We've also discovered trends. For example, we can now say that with 13 killings and a population of just 750,000, Kern County, California, has the deadliest law enforcement in the country. Kill our cops! Off our streets! Kill our cops! Off our streets! And if you're wondering why it took so long for this issue to come to the fore, the fact is, for most Americans, outside of the occasional unwanted speeding ticket, the police only show up when they need them. If that's your reality, it's easy to quietly assume that if they kill anyone, that someone was a dangerous criminal who must have deserved it. Only by telling these stories and counting these cases do people begin to realize how much more complicated it really is. And after all this counting, at last the authorities have been forced to act. In October, the Department of Justice announced it would launch a pilot program to track killings nationwide. And earlier this month, the FBI announced that it would be revamping its data collection as well. What is still unclear is what will be done to stop it. This is the number of Americans killed by police in 2015. Right now, there's little to suggest 2016 will be any different.